Good day, everyone. Today we are talking about section 5.1, find probability and odds. So we have two learning targets for today. I can define and calculate theoretical and experimental probabilities, and I can define and calculate odds in favor and odds against. So we're going to start first with what is our definition of probability? And this is the likelihood that an event will occur. All right, and so we can write we can write this as a fraction which we all know that fractions can then be converted to decimals or a percentage. All right, so as we can see here our range is 0, it's impossible, which would also be 0% to 100% or certain and then of course we have 50% in between. So we can go all the way from 0 to 50%. So when we're talking about a fraction obviously we can't have a negative value and our numerator can't be larger than our denominator because that would be equal to more than 1. So again fraction decimal or a percent. Our theoretical probability then is what should happen. So what we say is in theory. So for example, when we talk about flipping a coin, we should get heads or tails. So one heads out of two sides. Talk about rolling a die or a standard die. You know, there's one side with a one on it out of six sides. So the probability of getting a one is one in six. So when we define this, we say it is the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes possible. So again, what's the probability of rolling a 1? Well, there's 1, 1 out of 6 sides. And a note, when we're talking probability, we use the capital P. So like probability of 1 would be written like that. P for probability and then whatever we're calculating the probability inside parentheses. All right, so when we're doing a problem like this, so it says you reach into a bag containing four yellow marbles, five green, and six blue. One of the first things you're going to do is find the total. So you add them up and you find that N, our total number, is 15. Again, you need to know the total number of outcomes possible. What is the total number? So it says probability of blue, it's how many blue are there out of how many total. And then we will reduce this, so we get 6 out of 15 and reduces to be 2 fifths. Yes, you are expected to reduce all answers. So again, yellow, there are 4 yellow out of the 15. 4 out of 15 doesn't reduce. And then green, there are 5 green out of 15 marbles and we reduce that and get one third. That is theoretical probability. What should happen in theory? A lot of times with probability we start dealing with tables. So this table says a department store is offering a discount on sunglasses. The table shows the number of each type of discount on sunglasses. You choose a pair at random. So the thing is, in order to work with these tables, one of the first things we need to do is we need the total. So find the total of each row and the total of each column. And then when you add them, the total column and the total row should equal the same amount. In this case, it is 28. 
Now that we have our totals, we can calculate these probabilities. So it says calculate the totals for each row and column and then find each probability. What's the probability that we randomly select a polarized pair of sunglasses? Well, I look and there are 12 pairs of polarized out of the 28 pairs total. And then we reduce that fraction and get four sevenths. What's the probability we get green lens? Well, I look here, the green lens total is 15. So that means 15 out of the 28 sunglasses have green lenses. So that's my probability, and that doesn't reduce. Now, this one is a bit of a tricky one. So really, there should be a comma there going probability of a mirrored brown lens. So we're saying, given that we draw a brown lens, what's the probability that it is mirrored? So I'm only looking in this brown column here going of the brown, there are nine mirrored out of 13 pairs of brown sunglasses. All right, experimental probability. This is what happens after we have an experiment. So we say, what did happen? So theoretical, what should happen in theory, experimental, what did happen from an experiment. When we say experiment in math, I mean, it could be as simple as flipping coins, drawing dice, marbles, whatever. And so our definition then will be the number of success over the total number of trials. When we're saying trials, we're talking every time you draw or spin or flip or something like that, that's a trial. So your total number is how many times did you complete or perform the experiment? So it says here, a bag contains one blue, one green, one yellow, and one red ball. A ball is drawn at random from the bag and then replaced. The table shows the results for 24 drawings. Right there, that means that n equals 24. That's our total number of drawings. So find the following experimental probabilities. What's the probability of blue? Well, we look at the table, we got four blue in 24 draws. And then we reduce that. So go ahead, take a moment and calculate each of these experimental probabilities. Hopefully you got that green was 6 out of 24, which is 1 fourth. Yellow is 9 out of 24, which reduces to be 3 eighths. And that red was 5 out of 24, and that doesn't reduce. Now, the, tr the follow-up question is kind of a tricky one. It says, for which color of the ball the experimental probability of drawing the color the same as the theoretical? So we need to go back and calculate the theoretical. And again, if we go back to the original problem, it says there was one blue, one green, one yellow, and one red. That meant there are four total balls in this bag. So that means of the blue, or there was one blue of the four, there was one green of the four, one yellow of the four, and one red. So which of these are matching the green? They are both one-fourth. Now, you could get a follow-up question. Does it say, does the experimental probability exceed the theoretical? Or in other words, is more than? So then you'd have to say, how many of these did we draw more than we expected? And then in that case, it would be yellow. Because out of 24 draws, we would expect to get six of each color, which means we drew yellow more often than we should have. If it said, is the experimental probability less than theoretical, your answer would be blue and red, because we drew less than we expected. All right, enough probability for today. Let's talk about odds. Odds are something that people make mistakes on all the time, and so we need to clarify this. First, we start with saying odds is a ratio. And again, a ratio is written as 
something colon something else. So here A colon B. So it is a ratio comparing what we call favorable and unfavorable outcomes. So there are two versions of this. There is odds in favor and odds against. So we start with odds in favor. So when we are doing this, we are saying it is the number of favorable outcomes and comparing that to the unfavorable. One way to think about this is whatever is favorable if it's not favorable, it's unfavorable. So one way I like to think about this is if you're not with us, you're against us. You're favorable, you're with us. You're on our side. If you're not on our side, you're against us. There's no bystanders, no middle ground. You're on one side or the other. So with that, when it's odds against, that means the against side is first. So it's the against to with us. You're either against us or you're with us. That means we're going unfavorable first and favorable second. And so the problem will tell you odds in favor, favor goes first. Odds against, the against or unfavorable goes first. So you have to read the problem carefully and then go through this. All right, so we're going to talk about playing cards. In class, you are going to get a playing card sheet. So please bear with me if you don't understand playing cards as you're watching this video. You will get a sheet that will help you with these. All right, so it says odds in favor of drawing a spade. So that means a spade is favorable. Well, when we talk about this, you're either a spade or you're not a spade. And so there are 13 spades in the deck, and there are 39 cards that are not spades. And then we reduce this ratio much like you would a fraction. So the ratio or the odds in favor of drawing a spade are one to three. So for every one spade there is in the deck, there are three cards that are not spades. And so here it says odds against a club. So that means we're comparing not a club to a club. Well, we know there are 13 clubs in the deck. And there are 39 that are not. So this problem is the pure opposite of odds in favor of drawing a spade would be odds against drawing a club. It, the suits are interchangeable here. But yeah, so it's 3 to 1 against drawing a club. So we're saying for every three cards that are not clubs, there is one card that is. Let's do a couple more examples. All right, let's talk about face cards. Again, a face card is jack, queen, king. The cards that literally have a face on them. There are three in each suit and four suits. So that means there are 12 cards that are faces. Now, again, there are 52 cards in the deck. If 12 of them are faces, I take those 12 out. And there are 40 cards left without faces. I reduce this ratio and I get 3 to 10. Again, against drawing a face card, I am just doing the literal opposite. So I'm going not face to face. So that means there are 40 not face cards to 12. And this reduces to be 10 to 3. So again, we read the colon as the word 2. Again, we will do lots of these in class. But understand ratios for odds, fractions, percentages, decimals for probabilities. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class. Otherwise, have a great day, everyone.